Greetings and uh, welcome to another video now. Last time I made a 41212 video and I did mention the fact that I did a 433 video last year. A lot of you guys remember that actually and I actually said, uh, you know, if you're interested in making or in me making another one this year, let me know. And tons of you guys said yes. So here we are. And uh, obviously this starts with the caveat that uh, the 433 this year is even worse than it was last year. And when I say 433, I don't count the 433 fourth variation, the one with the cam, because it is a 433, but at the same time, it's essentially just a wider version of the 4231. So if the 4334 works, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the other 433s will work. All the other 433s are in their own paradigm of uh, how they work. The 4334 is an exception. It's a formation on its own, and it's way too similar to the 4231 to ever be considered alongside those other 433s it's always going to be a good one because 4231 is also always going to be a good one that general shape with the cam is always good the tricky part is making the 433 work when you don't have the cam all right so getting that out of the way obviously the 433 isn't as good uh, this year and it, it's not like it was great last year guys it was actually really bad last year why is it bad and this is kind of important to get into because uh, you have to know these things before you get into this formation. Now, I can hit elite with this formation. I can do it, uh, but it's a lot harder. Why do I do it? Well, it's just fun. It's fun to play different formations. I inherently enjoy the 4-3-3, as some of you might as well. You just might like the style it brings in real life. You might be an Ajax fan. You might be an old Barcelona fan. So you like, you would want to replicate that style of play while playing 4-3-3 and not the diamond. You know what I mean? So uh, it is what it is. Uh, because a lot of people seem to associate Tiki Taka football with the diamond formation, which is not how it goes. You know what I mean? Like, it's just because it's a video game, you can play Tiki Taka football in the diamond, but Tiki Taka is more associated with uh, the 4 3 3 than anything in real life, at least. But in FIFA, it doesn't translate well. So, obviously, that's the caveat. Uh, this formation, before you try it, if you're not interested in the 4 3 3, because I know some people are just inherently interested and will want to try it even when uh, you know things are going bad in the game for them but if you do want to try it just keep in mind that it's not super efficient but without further ado i'm going to get into the instructions the tactics and then when i get into that i'm going to say other things about the formation as i show you guys clips of me using the 43 this year in foot champions now obviously here are my game plans and i prefer the second variation i've tinkered with the second and the fifth uh, the difference being that the second is the one uh, with a striker and a CDM, and then the fifth is the one that has a CDM and a center forward, the false nine. I like this one better this year because, I don't know, I just feel like it plays out better for myself. If I have the, the fifth variation, it feels too clogged up. Just putting that out there. Also, you may have noticed that previously I had an empty slot in my team. That's just because I'm selling things and I'm doing, I'm remaking my team, so I don't have actually, I don't actually have players. But nonetheless, we go balanced defensive style because uh, that's just usually my favorite. Everything else is kind of weird. I'm not going to use draw back because uh, I can't be bothered with the draw back meta. I don't want to be a part of it. I want to break it down. Uh, constant pressure, stamina issues, obviously. Uh, press after possession loss is a bit weird, but you can kind of tinker with these two if you kind of want to. Uh, personally, I would try pressure on heavy touch before pressure after possession loss. Uh, but balanced you might want to start with this see how it goes We don't touch the width and we put depth at six because the problem with the 433 is that the three CMs and the center uh, Or the center the center backs of the defensive line You want to keep that gap between those as small as possible for some people it might making it might mean making the depth lower For some people it might make mean making the depth higher for me. I like six uh, I'm always tinkering with it anyways, but this is my current setup for offensive style. Now, there's two that I like to go with here. And for now, my favorite has been long ball. Now, I usually would have gone balanced, but long ball is uh, kind of like firing everything up for me offensively. Not that much because obviously it's not like I'm out here, everyone running around. The offensive ANI in this game is absolutely horrific, so it doesn't matter what you choose, it won't let you, but I choose long ball. I think it's a good option uh, for this formation because you have the two wingers that when they do get in behind, maybe you have an easy through ball down the wing. So I like that, but if not, 
you don't like that definitely try balanced that works as well i wouldn't go for possession because you're adding a slow formation with a slow build up that's too much and uh fast build up can kind of be used sometimes but for now my two favorite have been balanced and long ball with long ball being my current setup now with width we go four because this formation is inherently extremely 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 wide so put it down a little bit uh, obviously extreme thought process might let you to believe oh it's super wide why don't we just go one depth well uh, look at the look at how the defenders you know get shaped right you don't want to be you lose one ball and then you're completely exposed on the wing and then you you can see it an easy sweat just for me four is good you might push it at three but four is decent players in the box we don't change it leave that at five corners and free kicks do whatever you want i usually don't touch it really if anything i'd rather go one or two rather than four or five because uh even if you need to you know win uh personally i don't really catch up a score by hooving the ball in the box because someone my opponent will crowd the box so why would this you know i need players in and around the box to pull players out i don't need someone in the box to crowd it even more where i can't even get the pass because my opponent has crowded it to uh, unhealthy amount so now let's look at the um instructions while i cover the instructions i'm actually gonna talk a little about personnel center backs same center backs you want in any formation uh, right now i'm just kind of running a makeshift line with that zanetti i got from an icon spc but we ignore that uh fullbacks you want fast ones preferably ones that you feel comfortable with playing because they're gonna get involved because look at this they are completely unbalanced and this is where it gets uh risky but i'm going to talk about this more as i show the goals so yeah everyone in the defensive line is on balance i don't touch anything okay now cdm you put well you put you can put but i put cup passing lanes because i just prefer that over mark man mark uh if anything i would go with either cup passing lanes. if you don't like that just go with balanced but i wouldn't go with man mark now, I also do cover center because out of the three midfielders, this is the one that needs to be anchored down. The other two can be a little bit of free roam, but this guy needs to cover the center defensively and drop between defenders. Obviously, you can also try stay back while attacking. Essentially, they're both doing the same thing, except this one is a bit more extreme where when you're attacking, he's literally not even involved a little bit. He'll literally drop between your center backs. I like this one more because uh, I don't need him help. I don't need help from him attacking. Uh, I feel like with the fullbacks pushing up, and I'll explain later why I have them pushing up. Uh, I've already got enough men up top. I need one dude to stay back, and it's extremely important for him to do so, especially with the fullbacks set up the way that they are. Now, for your center mids, uh, it's one center mid does one thing and one does the other. So my Nangolan is obviously between Fio and Nangolan. He's a center mid that is more all around, but more defensive minded than Figo. So he's going to be on stay back while attacking. You could put cover center, but I just find that cover wing default is the best. Remember guys, cover wing doesn't literally mean he goes on the wing. It just means he'll be more inclined to help on the wing when Semedo will be out of position. So he won't just hang out on the wing. He'll still cover the center. But you can tinker with that and see what you like. For Figo, he's obviously the more offensive-minded. He acts kind of like a second striker. I put get forward on him and free roam. Um, you can try also without free roam and just see, just get forward and have him get forward. But uh, I've, I've been doing free roam and get forward, and I enjoy the fact that Figo kind of acts basically as a fourth offensive player alongside the center forward and the two wingers. Now. For the wingers, I do get in behind. This is the one that has to be in this, okay? You need get in behind for sure. Not everything else is up for debate. Now, here's the thing. A lot of times, a lot of years, you'll see custom tactics with wingers. Everyone always puts cuts inside, getting behind. But in my experience, cut inside does like nothing. They don't cut inside. There are no offensive runs where they do cut inside. At best, they'll just stand on the inside, but they won't cut on the inside. So, if anything, I either do the combination of getting in behind and balanced or getting in behind and free roam. Free roam does a better job at cutting your making your player cut inside than cut inside. OK, now, naturally, I leave this unbalanced because they naturally cut inside with the center backs or the fullbacks on balance. The fullback will push up and occupy the wing. Therefore, the winger will push inside and he'll be pushed closer to the center forward closer to the center of the pitch and that naturally happens if you don't think that's enough 
Then alongside the balanced fullbacks, I would add free roam and your winger will cut inside even more. He will take part in the play in the middle of the field even more and that might help because a lot of people's problem with the 4 3 3 is how do I get the wingers involved? Well, this is how I've been able to do it in FIFA 20. In other years, I didn't have to push the fullbacks forward, but desperate times call for desperate measures. But yeah, tinker with free roam, tinker with balance. Those are the two. Obviously, start with balance, see how it goes. Uh, same thing on the other wing, right? Nothing changes. Get in behind, balanced, or free roam if you want. For the center forward, what I use, because it's messy, right? I use false nine. Now, why am I doing this false nine instead of just playing the false nine formation and having Messi hover below, hover at a lower point uh, naturally as opposed to using the 4-3-3, right? Second variation with the false nine instruction. And the reason is the spacing for me works out better. So this is what the 4-3-3 looks like, right? So let me show you guys what the 4-3-3-5 looks like. This is the 4-3-3 second variation. This is the 5. You see, just look at the wingers. You see how the wingers are a little bit more narrow. You see how the CDM in the fifth variation is a little bit lower. You see, and then obviously the center forward is a lot lower than the striker. Something about the spacing in this formation in this year's game, I'm not a huge fan of. But again, by all means, these instructions will work for either of these two formations. So look at this custom tactic video as a 2-in-1 right? They'll work for both because essentially the shapes are very similar, but this is a little bit more narrow. The spacing in here for me is better and it allows me to attack more free flowing. But nonetheless, on the striker, which is my Messi, you would want someone obviously on this uh, in this position for me, not a target man like Ronaldo or Ibra or something like that. I prefer someone like Messi uh, in this position. He's going to drop back. Players like Figo, Neymar, and whoever I end up buying at left wing will be the ones who will be receiving from Messi. And plus, Messi is so good that uh, he's fine there. But someone like Insigne would work well here as well. Mertens, blah, blah, blah. These kinds of players. So now let's get into the footage. And uh, while the footage is playing, I'll, you know, add some other uh, things that I've picked up on the formation. All right. So now here we have some clips of me playing uh, the 4 3 3 and foot champions. I'm trying to make them a little bit more... Uh, long-winded show you guys more context uh, blah 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 now obviously guys I'm gonna be real with you uh, the main reason I made this video was for you guys for those asking Stalin please make a 4 3 video because as much as I love this formation and I want it to be good I'm, I'm like I told you guys this isn't meta not even close to being meta it was never meta meta but like we went from fifa 17 where we had manika win an event and then principe win an event with the 433 second variation to nowadays i don't think i've ever seen a pro even touch this in draft man so it pains my heart to say how painfully bad this is but uh you know, sometimes, like me, you just want to play for fun. You just want to do what you want. So you'll find a way to survive while having fun. It's not all about competitive this and that. Sometimes you just want to enjoy yourself. And so this is what I do when I want to enjoy myself. Obviously, we got a little bit lucky there with the rebound and the cheesy sweat. But I'm just giving you guys, like, honest, real clips uh, of how to score. It's not like people are scoring beautiful goals in general with this game. Uh, we all know how I feel about it. But nonetheless... Uh, you know, we had Pirlo at CM this weekend. We were trying him out. We had so much fun with him. Uh, unfortunately, I panicked with the mounts that he dropped. And so I kind of cut my losses there. Probably a mistake, but whatever. In terms of, uh, guys, getting the wingers involved, you know, if balanced fullbacks doesn't work, I would risk putting your fullbacks on join the attack always. And that will guarantee you. Obviously, you'll be more exposed, guys. But like I said, this is a formation that will hopefully just help you guys just have more fun uh, if you ever are in the mood for it. This is just my setup because, you know, sometimes you're just wondering, how can I make the 4 3 3 work for me? As we saw there, Pirlo had a nice position in the box. When you win the box up top, you got your striker. And then in between the striker and the wings, your CMs will often just position themselves. Uh, sometimes the CF makes the run or the striker there and Messi. You see that with the nice little opening. A lot of the times you'll see your team is slower to run up the field than the pace at which you're moving. So maybe fast buildup could be an option for some of you guys. I know that I'm going to be tinkering with it. As you guys saw, I'm calling this part one of the ultimate 4-3-3 guide for FIFA 
20 because my dream for FIFA 20 is to make a part two to this video where maybe I find uh, the holy grail of systems and uh, hopefully I can share you guys. But this is part one. It's not a goodbye. It's hopefully a see you later. And let me know you guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, peace out.